Tunic, an unassuming, top-down Zelda-like released in March of 2022, where you explore the world as a small fox. On the surface, it appears to be a simple and bright game that would, as I just mentioned, match the tone and depth of an early Zelda game. However, Tunic is much deeper than what meets the eye. There are secrets and lore similar in depth to what you would find in games like Dark Souls or Five Nights at Freddy's. Unlike those games, however, the information and the lore mostly come in the form of in-game manual pages. Throughout the game, you collect these pages after clearing rooms and solving puzzles. Pages can teach you secret gameplay mechanics, lore, and clues to answering puzzles. They are vital to completing the game. Most of the text in the game and the manual is also in a language the community has dubbed Trunic for its similarity in appearance to, well, runes. The game gives the player the tools needed to translate this language, and many players already have. This gives us access to the story and lore of the world Tunic takes place in. At the start of the game, the player is dropped immediately in the world with the little friendly fox waking up on the shore of this strange land. There's no tutorial, no explanation. From there, the player takes control of the fox and embarks on their journey to explore the world. However, the story doesn't begin there. It begins a very long time ago with an ancient civilization of foxes. They were a powerful civilization that understood their reality was divided into multiple planes of existence and believed in the powerful and mysterious Holy Cross, something I plan to explore in another video, so please stay tuned for that. The foxes existed on the physical plane, known as the canonical plane, and discovered what seemed to be a spiritual plane, which is called the Far Shore. They were able to traverse to the Far Shore and sought to increase their power there. We do not know exactly how they were able to reach the Far Shore early in the story, only how they did so later on, through the use of the Golden Pads. Early on, it could have been through the power of prayer, through death, or maybe through another method not yet discovered. The foxes then found a new source of power in the canonical plane. The third page of the manual states, an alluring old power was discovered, fossils of self, annealed visions of the future, entombed and cast into sarcophagi and buried, a lever in the canonical plane, a store of potential. Perhaps it is the fabled prize, the power to defy death. The subject of the sentence regarding the fossils is still somewhat uncertain. Some believe it is speaking directly to the foxes, and they saw the fossils of themselves in the creatures we named the corrupted foxes, and that they were a warning to what they would become if they came to rely on this power. Others believe this is a foreshadowing of their civilization as a whole, and it is in fact speaking to the tomb they discovered as a future vision of their civilization. A third theory believes the fossils were not foxes at all, but the crystals that are shown in the image beside this text. These crystals later would become cavities in reality that drained any who were near of all hope. The crystals could possibly be fossils of beings from the far shore. There is also some uncertainty as to where the discovery of the fossils was made. It could have been from opening up one of the sarcophagi throughout the land, in the case of them being foxes, in the region of the quarry, if the theory of the crystals is to be believed. 
or if it was found during the discovery of the tomb where the sarcophagi were made, the tomb known as the Rooted Ziggurat. The hero of this ancient civilization of foxes ventured out to unearth the origin of this new power and discovered the Rooted Ziggurat, a tomb that showed them the terrible truth of how this power functioned. This new power was seen as a new origin of life, and to worship it, they built a cathedral. The foxes believed it could bring them something they deeply desired. Holy Oblivion. Holy Oblivion is another point of contention in the community. One thing that can be agreed on is the method by which Holy Oblivion is achieved through the consumption of the miasma. The miasma is the bright pink liquid that surrounds the corrupted foxes and fills the rooted ziggurat. The result of consuming the miasma is where there are differing theories. The first theory states that by drinking the miasma, the foxes become shells of their former selves. And as the definition of the word oblivion would describe, it brings them to an eternal state of being unaware or unconscious, acting outside of their control or volition. Another theory, and one I personally lean towards, is that by drinking the miasma, the foxes eventually become the corrupted foxes and are entombed into the sarcophagi, finding oblivion and eternal life in this cursed way. Independent of the method, the foxes' over-reliance on their new discovery was the beginning of their end. The barriers between the plains began to weaken, and creatures of the far shore began to seep into the canonical plain due to their overuse of the power afforded to them by the sarcophagi and the miasma. Machines of war, including the powerful siege engines, were built to repel these creatures. As the planes became more torn apart, time became a never-ending loop without a beginning or end. Their solution was to imprison a fox in the space between the canonical plane and the far shore, not bound by their now cyclical timeline to re-anchor the planes and prevent them from bleeding into each other. This space in between was named the Shadow Oubliette. The fox that would stay in the oubliette gained the title of the heir and remained there for the rest of their life. But a single heir could not remain there forever. The far shore drains the energy and memories of those existing within it. This also has an interesting connection to the definition of the word oubliette, which means a secret dungeon with access only through the trapdoor in its ceiling which itself is based on the word oublier, or to forget, in French. For this reason, the Shadow Oubliette has a dual purpose, as a prison for the air, where they would forget all they knew and be forgotten, as well as a beacon. This is where our little fox comes in. You take the role of the Ruin Seeker and the heir to the heir. Brought about to, you guessed it, seek the beacon and replace the heir. However, that is not the only route that can be taken. Another, involving a relic from beyond this plane, is also possible. This relic is, of course, the manual you have been collecting all along. So you can either fight and replace the air, or share the wisdom of the manual with the air, reminding them of who they were and possibly break the cycle. But the path you choose to take is yours to decide. Thank you for watching. We will be going through more of the different mysteries that Tunic has to offer, and trust me, there are many. I wanted to thank the Tunic community for all of these findings and interpretations. It is only through talking to many people 
that I was able to come to the points I presented. It is a vital part of this process, and I would encourage you to join our discussion. Some of the places you can find the Tunic community is through the Tunic Reddit and the Finji Discord, both linked below. I have also started my own Tunic Lore Discord, where people can come and discuss their findings together, also linked below. Some major contributors to my research are Lin, a member of the Finji Discord, and Jess Zakili, a fellow YouTuber who makes fantastic Tunic Lore videos. I would highly recommend checking her videos out. Her channel is also linked in the description. But now, I need to go back to the archives and research a bit more on the next topic I will be discussing. But until then, I will see you next time. Bird pip goes. <laughs>